friends. Today I thought we'd play with some of these little um, earthy colored type of feathery florals and fillers. Um, I was at the Arboretum today in San Diego and I noticed everything is in transition. A lot of the colors are gone. And a lot of things were these really beautiful nutmeggy colors and almond colors and um, beautiful shades of browns. So I thought I'd just try and paint a few of those with you. For my uh, supplies today, as always, so this is my fall. I use these Artisto pads in case you haven't seen those. They're 140 pound cold press and again, as I always talk about. Um, so if you've heard this, go ahead and just fast forward, but I love these. This is my fall one. Um, so I'm putting all my little fall palettes in here, my fall color boards. I come up with my fall flowers and every year I can just come back to this and reference. So it's really nice. Um, it's all spiral bound and it's a good student grade paper but has really beautiful texture and does really well with a lot of water and then i've got my meat and palette which you know i love it's a really nice um, you can hear that it's a good quality palette but it's small enough i can hold in my hand um, and of course my two wells of water that's also a beautiful meat and ceramic if you've ever spilled your water you get how important it is to have a nice heavy um, water dish and then of course having one to wash and one to rinse and i today will be using my my lang uh, paint palette it's already got a lot of pre-made different browns and oranges and reds and all those beautiful fall colors so i don't have to worry about mixing and uh, for me, painting every day, this makes sense. I've tried an awful lot of paints and I really like those Mylangs. They're real creamy and vibrant and affordable. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using my eight, of course, my eight Velvet Touch Princeton Brush Round. Um, I might also maybe use my Princeton six. So I'm gonna have that handy. And then I always have handy my six long round because it's a little bit thinner and I can get some details if I like. So let's prepare our paints. I'm gonna be using a lot of this um, in the My Lang. It's a cad yellow, cad orange, mixing them together and a yellow ochre if you're using your Winsor Newtons. So I've got those here and notice there was a lot of that at the uh, botanical gardens today. So I'm going to get those ready. Um, maybe I might use a little bit of green. We'll see. So I've got my, my go-to greens are olive green and sap green that I like to mix together. Um, I'm sure you have your favorite greens you like to use. And then definitely my burnt sienna, burnt umber, and maybe I'll just mix a little bit of um, maybe some of the red in there. Okay, so let's start by, I think I wanna do these um, soft little feathery flowers um, that I saw there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to wet my brush, my eight round, and I love this brush because the feel is so nice. And then tap off a little, but I, I want this to be somewhat wet. And by I'm just going to switch positions here so I'm not sticking my hand in my palette. And let's just wet this area here. So I'm wetting it in kind of a... Um, flower bowl shape like this just with water and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the brown and maybe some of that yellow ochre but I want it a lighter value just meaning it has a little bit more water than pigment um, so I talk a lot about doing value sheets with um, before you start your paintings which just means 
that might be the darkest value, something like that. And then I want to be able to create a little bit lighter value and then yet lightest. And it's real important to know those three values and to use all three in your painting. Now I might have to wet this again since I started talking here. And I've got a little bit of yellow on my brush now. That's okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do that again. And now I'm going to go in using the tip of my brush. So I'm going to rest my palm on either my paper or my desk and just very lightly using the tip of my brush, I'm going to go in and just laying down some paint here and there. And it's very washy because I've wet that area first. And then go in and before it dries, I want to create our little stem. So I'll pick up some of my green, maybe mix it with a little bit of that brown and using very light pressure in the tip of my brush, I'm creating this little stem here. There you go. Now before this dries, I want to go in and maybe add, use a little bit of that gold ochre, yellow ochre, and touch in a little bit here and there. But I wanted to kind of keep a little bit of a transparency in there. Now here's where I would use my long six round Princeton brush and just picking up a little bit of that brown, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and using that fine point, which is just a little bit more than the eight, and going in and creating these little lines. Just for some definition here and there. And I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. I really like that. And let's go on to our next one. So washing, rinsing my brush. Just pat it off a bit on your paper towel. And let's go into creating another one of those. So I'm going to try and create a little bit different sizes in all of these. So I've got that wet, going to go back to my little bit of brown and that yellow ochre and start laying that paint in. Just like that. Might pick up a little and then into my brown. These flowers today were so beautiful. It was really fun seeing the garden, the botanical gardens, and then into my green for the petal. I want to do that while this is wet so that I get a little bit of that spread into my flower. There we go. Um, it was really fun seeing the botanical gardens today because it's so completely different in the winter compared to the spring in the summer. It's, you know, different flowers, a different look. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown in there. I don't wanna to get too dark, but I do like that brown. Yeah, such a different look in the, the winter compared to spring and summer. And now I'll go in, I'm gonna create another one here. So just wetting my paper. Pick up some of that brown mixed with my yellow ochre. And as you can see here, I'm getting all of my values in there. So I've got some of this very dark value, my mid value, and then a very light value. That creates such beautiful play inside your flowers. That yellow ochre. And then go into that with our stem. And when you're working this wet and wet, you know, you really do have to work kind of quickly. 
because once it dries, you're not getting that wet and wet, obviously. Then maybe some of that brown. And if I want to pick some of that up, I just wipe off my brush and go back in. Like that. Now I can go back into these and add in some little, as if it's shapes of the flowers. So I'm dipping into my dark brown and just maybe go around and outline some of those flowers. I think that's really beautiful. And for me, what I love is in winter, yes, the bright colors might be gone here in Southern California, but look at how beautiful these other colors really can be if you look close. And I always appreciate that in the desert, in the summer. I think that's really quite beautiful. Okay, we have one more here. So I'm gonna get that one wet. And I made it a little bit different shot, uh, size. Oh, I actually see I have one here too, which makes sense because I work in odd numbers. So I've got three here and then I've got two more coming. Add in that yellow ochre. There we go. Go in before that dries and add in my green. I'll try to share maybe in a post some of the pictures I got today. They were really, it was really beautiful. And maybe just a tiny bit of that brown here in there. Because there were so many browns in the garden today, but really beautiful. So even though everything's transitioning, it's so pretty. Pick up a little bit of that brown. Just using the tip of my brush and letting it kind of dance and play in there. And then our last one right here. I think these would be really pretty as an addition, just like those um, billy balls or um, those little round balls I did. Such pretty little additions to your paintings, your fall paintings. And then let's go in. Now I'm gonna make this one a little bit less uh, defined because I wanna make it look, so I rinsed my brush and I'm picking up some of that paint. I want it to look like it's a little bit more in the background, so I don't wanna get quite as detailed with this one. Go in and pick up my green. And there we go. And I think that's all the detail I'll add in that one just to kind of make it different. I saw a lot of these fun little, I don't even know what to call them. They were just little kind of balls and bobs and berries and they were sticking out in different places. I'm sure they looked different this time of year because they were kind of wearing down, closing out the season, but they were quite fun. So there we go. Wash and rinse my brush. Maybe just soften some of those edges. something like that. I want to say they called these lion's tail. I'll, I'll share some of my pictures with you. And they had a little bit of orange. They were really beautiful. I'd never seen these before. So there you go. And here's some more of these little tiny baubles and bits. I don't know what to call them. There we go. Maybe add a little orange into them. 
and wash and rinse my brush and pick up that green before it dries. And none of these really had leaves on them, which I thought was quite interesting, these particular ones. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some little grassy pieces. So let me pick up that brown. And I'm going to do some of this grass, just flicking my brush using the very tip. Maybe let's add a little bit of green to that. So to when I want to work very loosely and just kind of get this flick, I will transfer the hold on my brush from this area right here where the metal meets the handle and I will move it back because that gives me a little bit more freedom with my brush. So there was these this little grassy things that were sticking out of most of the plants. And there we go. Something like that. There was even some of these, let's see, I saw some of these little stems and they had things like that. So you could create some of those. There we go, just creates a little bit of interest. And I'm just using the tip of my brush and just these little dabs. And then to bring in some of that gold and orange, we've got it right here. Let's bring in a little bit over here too. There we go. So that way we've, our eye lands on the orange up here and then it travels here and then it goes on down here. Now I'm not going to go in and add any more detail to this one because I want it to look like it's a little bit less detail in the background. I'm debating if I should add in a few more of those balls, but before I do that, let's just draw the stem. There we go. So I think this is quite pretty. I think this would be a really beautiful little card. I'm gonna go in and add in a few more of these little doodads, just with the tip of my brush, something like that. So if you notice, I've got these different values. This is a very light value, so it's way in the background. And I think I'm good with that. I hope you give this a try. It's really fun. It was very wet and wet. And again, I just think it's so, for me, representative of this time of year where everything's kind of dying out and um, the browns and the oranges and uh, golds are really coming out. What I might do is just before I quit here is take my six round, which is very long, very pointed. And I think I will just put a tad bit of paint on the tip. And I'm going to go in here. Now that was too much. That's not how much I want. So I'm going to dab, see how much liquid came off. And just kind of do some flicking here. There we go. Maybe here. It's always fun to have a washy look, but then to go back in and just add some little dark touches, some little lines. So I'll do that, and then maybe here as well. I'm just flicking my brush. And I think that's really pretty because these flowers that I saw, they had these centers in them that did that kind of thing. Now I feel like this is a little flat here actually, so as it's drying, watercolors always dry definitely lighter. 
So what I think I want to do is go in and just darken a few of these like that. So they kind of pop out. Maybe another one here. And that kind of brings this depth in. Now this is in the background, so I don't want to touch that too much. And I don't want to overwork this because I really wanted it to be kind of fun and playful. The last thing I'll do is go in and grab some of my olive green in a darker value. So it hasn't got much water in it. And I'll go in and create a couple little... grasses, maybe some of those stems, and this just adds some interest. And it gives you, again, that depth. All right, so give this a try. I noticed I didn't give this one a stem, so let's just do that. Forgot this little guy. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. And I think uh, this is just very representative of this time of the year. Beautiful, lots of colors if you look close, but yet it's definitely showing this transition. So I hope you guys give it a try. I'll list all of my supplies um, down below. And again, these little Artisto pads are so, so wonderful. You guys will love them. And this particular one is my fall one. So I can, anytime I'm looking at doing a fall photo or a fall painting, I just come back and grab my fall book. I have tons and tons of these, piles and piles and piles of just these color boards and um, paintings. And I can always come back to them and get some inspiration, I label them. Or maybe one might be labeled to a trip I took or a camping trip and all of those uh, paintings I did while I was there. So these are, they're really great. All right guys, have fun and I will talk to you all soon. All right, bye-bye.